Welcome to NASA's Johnson Space Center, where we're joined today by astronaut Jessica Meir, who just got her first flight assignment. She'll be launching in September. And we're joined from space by astronaut Christina Cook, who just found out officially that her mission's gonna be extended and she'll be staying in space till February. Congratulations to you both. We're so excited for you. And we just wanna check in and see kind of how, how that feels. So let's jump right in. Um, let's start with Christina. Uh, Christina, I, I know you've known that the, this extension was a possibility for a while, but now that you officially have the word that you're gonna be staying in space for almost a year, how does that feel? Yes, hi Brandy, hi Jessica, it's great to be with you. Welcome on board the space station. And Jessica, congratulations on your flight assignment. I'm so happy for you. Um, to get to your question, Brandy, it feels awesome. Um, I have known that this was a possibility for a long time and it's truly a dream come true to know that I can continue to work on um, the program that I valued so highly my whole life. Um, to be able to contribute to that and to give my best every day to that for as long as possible um, is a true honor and a dream come true. All right, and, and Jessica, I know um, you've been training for years for this, and I, it's very exciting, but do you have time to celebrate for your mission, or are you too busy training? Oh, I've tried to celebrate it a little bit, but you're right. We've been working really hard the whole time since we were selected back as astronaut candidates in 2013 and to last year when I started training for a, a space station flight and over in Russia as well. So they keep us incredibly busy, especially right now, going back and forth between training trips in Russia and here learning how to be the co-pilot of the Soyuz, which I'll be doing, and then coming back here and learning all about all the different space station, space station systems and all the science and everything that we'll be doing on board. So definitely a lot of work, but trying to enjoy it and revel in it a little bit as well. Great. Well, you two are both um, selected as astronauts in 2013. I know you've been training together. You're up there uh, already. Christina's there with a couple of other astronauts from the 2013 class, Anne McLean and Nick Haig. And then Drew Morgan is also going to be launching in July. So it's like one big class party for y'all. Are you staying in contact talking about that? Does that increase the excitement? It absolutely does. This is something that we never dreamed could happen. You know, when we first started training together, all eight of us, we sat there and there was actually a joke made one day of talking about if we could actually end up flying together. And usually you don't have many rookies on the same flight, at least, at least that's how it worked out in the past. So we were really excited about it. We, we couldn't believe that this would actually be happening. It's still, I still kind of can't believe that we'll all be up there together. But for us, it is really the dream behind that dream come true because we all know each other so well and we truly are like a family. So it's going to mean even more so much for me to share my first flight with all of my other classmates as well. Christina, anything to add? Jessica said it really well, and um, in particular, I'm just really excited for Jessica to join us. Um, she and I trained together almost all of last year, going back and forth to Russia, and uh, as you can imagine, going through an experience like that, um, you truly bond, and so I'm ready for her to get up here and for us to have a good time um, and to get to work up here, put, it to, put our training to work. Um, in addition to the, having so many 2013 astronauts, we're also seeing a lot of women recently on board the space station. I think starting with uh, Serena Anand Chancellor back in June of last year, she was there to welcome Anne McLean. Anne McLean was there to welcome Christina. Christina will be there for Jessica. And uh, we've also got um, down the line Nicole Mann uh, scheduled to launch on Boeing CST 100 Starliner before the end of the year. So lots of women. Um, I, know that y'all kind of see all astronauts as being equal, but it seems like a milestone worth, worth noting, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's something, especially for our class, that we're really just used to now. You know, where our class was the first 50% female, 50% male representative. And so we're used to being in that equal environment already. So I think it's really just reflecting where we are now in society, and that makes it even better for us we can celebrate that and i think you know if it does help us inspire the young girls that are out there we are absolutely there to do that as well because we remember what it was like Yep, I agree with everything Jessica said. It's a great honor um, to hopefully inspire people. I think examples do matter. I know that seeing women in um, doing awesome work in positions in engineering and science and fulfilling all of their dreams um, 
it truly inspired me. And so it, it's part of paying homage to those people that paved the way for us to be where we are today, as well as inspiring the future. Um, I do think examples matter. And so it's important that people just see that it's normal for people of all shapes, sizes, um, genders to, to be able to fulfill the dreams that they have. That's a record setting chain. And um, I guess, Christina, you'll also be breaking a, a record that's already been set by Peggy Whitson for the longest single uh, uh, continuous space flight by a woman. Is that something that you are tracking at all or is, are things too busy up there? Definitely busy up here, but um, it's my honor to fall in um, Peggy's footsteps. Peggy has been a mentor and a um, heroine of mine for many, many years. She always stepped in and um, helped our class through tough times and challenges when we were in our training program. And so I hope that um, me being up here and giving my best every day is a way for me to say thank you to people like her who not only paved the way through their examples, but actively reached out um, to make sure that we could be successful as well. I don't necessarily uh, count days or numbers. It's definitely a lot uh, very early in the process to start talking about records, but um, I just really take it one day at a time. Christina, have you sought advice from Peggy yet or Scott Kelly or any of these longer duration crew members then on what to expect and what to start thinking about? You know what? We have, and it's been a really neat process. Um, we, When we found out that it could be a possibility, and when I say we, I do mean uh, Drew Morgan and I, who are both extending into a third expedition on board, we were given the advice to reach out, and we did. And I talked to both Peggy and Scott, and I think they had some great words. Peggy in particular, she said, find what you love and make sure you have it up there and that you embrace it and you're able to, to do it because that's what's going to sustain you. And um, Scott Kelly had some great advice. Um, talking about pacing and making sure that you're ready for the long haul. And also, my husband and I actually together um, were listening to his book because there's a lot of advice in there that, that has helped us. So um, they've been instrumental, actually, and it's great to see how much they have reached out to us and been willing to share their experiences. Let me get both of you to kind of weigh in on what you think the impact is um, on little girls and, and even little boys around the world of, of seeing women setting records and, and doing things in space. You know, is that, does that help them reach their, their dreams, their goals? Yeah, I think it's always useful to have that kind of role model to see somebody that embodies something that you can identify with, whether that's, you know, your background or something, some piece of your background or some piece of your personality or perhaps even what you look like in terms of thinking, wow, maybe I could do that too. And I think that is really important. It's one of the reasons why I think it's also really important for us to do outreach in terms that are really have an individual impact and a personal impact. One of my favorite appearances was when I went back to my hometown and went to the school system there and talked to the students. And one girl after the talk came up to me afterward and said, that just changed everything for me. That was really game changing because I grew up in the same town as you and it just suddenly made me realize that I could really do anything I wanted. And so having that kind of personal connection, that kind of role model that someone can identify with from their own perspective, I think really can be invaluable in the long run. Yep, Jessica, I completely agree. You couldn't have said it better. Another thing that comes along with um, a time where NASA is setting records is it's just demonstrating all of the awesome things that NASA is doing. The fact that we're in a really dynamic environment right now in space exploration, how many new exciting projects are on the horizon, going back to the moon, gateway, um, having long duration missions more regularly because we are learning more about long duration and understanding it. And it is almost turning into not that big of a deal to have somebody on board station for 10, 11 months because we've done it before, we're good at it, and we're going to keep doing it. It's getting easier for us to, to have people for long durations, but the scientists, I think, would, would so, are still getting excited. So, Christina, can you tell us a little bit about what some of the scientific benefits for a long duration uh, stay is? 
Yeah, definitely. I think the human research side of it is the side that benefits the most from long duration stays. And we're sort of in an era where we're able to kind of hone in on some of the more, um, the effects of microgravity that tell us more about our own bodies, um, our immune responses, how our musculoskeletal system reacts, and things of that nature. So I'm able to participate in some studies that both um, Scott Kelly and Peggy Whitson participated in. And any time you increase the diversity of a pool of folks participating in any of those human research studies, um, you make the re results of those studies more robust. So we're happy to be participating in those and to get the numbers up. Okay, and I think we're just about out of time, but we, uh, I think, have a time for one more question. And Christina, I was going to see if you had any tips for Jessica as she gets ready for her own flight. Well, uh, Jessica and I, you know, we share a lot. Um, she has a lot of tips for me, and I think my main uh, thing for her would just be to enjoy the ride. It's going to come fast, and I can't wait to see you. Um, we, we share advice all the time, so... Um, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to her uh, spacewalk skills getting up here. She's an ace um, in the suit and uh, just looking forward to learning from each other. Any questions for, Jess for Christina, Jessica? Yeah, like Christina said, we're talking all the time. That's one of the really interesting things about the space station now, where we have this, these great communication assets. So I'll be talking on the phone or sending emails back and forth with, us, especially now that all my classmates are up there. So. Uh, with Anne and, and Nick and Christina too. So we're constantly trading advice and tidbits and I'm so looking forward to joining all of them up there. It's really gonna be an incredible experience. All right, that's the last that we have time for today, but uh, we mentioned that they're gonna be joined uh, in space by their crew member Drew, or their crewmate Drew Morgan. He's gonna be launching in July. He wasn't able to join us today uh, because he's actually training underwater in our Nutribuoyancy lab, but uh, he is gonna be having a news conference with his other crewmates uh, coming up on Friday. You can tune in to that here on NASA TV at 1 p.m. Central Time on Friday, the April 19th. Thanks so much.